I know you're a self-proclaimed atheist. I know your mentor, Professor Richard Dawkins, is as well. And I watched an incredible conversation I had with Dr. Jordan Peterson recently, where at the at the end he 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 asked you a question or challenged you and said, "Your passionate search for truth is that not some form of I don't know spirituality?" <laughs> and it was just fascinating to see you guys have that just honest conversation when neither one of you had something to prove. Um, I was just curious if, if I'm summarizing that correctly. And yeah. have, have yeah. you thought more about that? Because uh, Richard Dawkins was in that seat a couple months ago and you, true, you both are truly passionate about what you do. And if it wasn't for your passion and your insistence on that truth, we wouldn't have this great work and you probably wouldn't have this incredible life of fascination. Have you thought more about what Dr. Peterson said? <laughs> Yes, I, 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 you know, I, I, I have a lot of friends who are very much more devout than I am, uh, and uh, are incredibly intelligent and open-minded people, um, and uh, you know, I find that hard to square with the fact that I uh, find the, the basic tenets of religion unconvincing, and I want to be able to say so, as it were. <laughs> Um, uh, now, quite a lot of people say, well, yes, but religion does good in the world. And I'm very prepared to concede that. I think it also does harm, but I think it can do good. Yes, there's no question about that. And, and you know, in that sense, the end justifies the means. You know, if, if by getting people to believe in God, you get them to give more charitably or to look after their communities better, well, that is an important factor and has to be taken into account. But it's not the same as saying... Uh, Jesus Christ was the Son of God, and uh, you know, and, and when you die, you're going to heaven or hell, and all that kind of thing. Um, which uh, you know, and, and and you know, and I don't dislike the um, uh, cultural institutions around religion. I go to church quite a lot these days, mainly because I go to funerals because I'm getting so old that you know friends die and. A lot of them happen in churches, and I love singing a hymn or listening to some a lovely reading from the Bible. You know, I mean, I'm not a, allergic to any of that. Um, uh, the, my excuse could be that the Church of England is a relatively mild form of the virus, <laughs> <laughs> but that's a right. metaphor that will annoy some of my more devout friends. Yeah, um, I had a guest in here named Dr. Rupert Sheldrake, and he wrote a book called oh, yes. "Science and Spiritual Practices," yes. and. and um, I, you know, Rupert does things like fasting and pilgrimages, and actually I went on a pilgrimage with him, with me and my daughter one day, and went to a bunch of just churches throughout London. It was just a fascinating oh, day. Oh, wonderful, yeah. Yeah, and, yeah. and um, he seems to think we've, we've thrown the baby out with the bathwater with religion, um, and that a lot of the dogma bothers us and upsets us and probably has done some bad, but so much of the rituals are, are I think, somehow technology to make us uh, more cohesive and uh, society and so it's well, fascinating the, to think about that. Like you said, singing yeah. together, fasting, yeah. giving to the poor. Yeah, I, I think he's not wrong about that. And and that the um, when you persuade people not to believe in God, they don't believe in nothing. They believe in something else. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, and that's clearly true. You know, environmentalism is clearly a very religious movement these days, yeah. um, and in some ways may prove to be more harmful and certainly more puritanical, more. Um, more um, uh, uh, extreme in, in some ways than 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 conventional religion has become, uh, and I think you know I would make the argument that religions are most dangerous in their early years. You know the Christian Church was brutal in the early uh, Christian centuries in terms of what they did to learning, enlightenment, to non-believers. You know, uh, don't let anyone tell you it was anything other than the Taliban of the day. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, and uh, yet, the uh, you know you you can't persuade me that good old Justin Welby is a nasty piece of Taliban work today. Of course, he's not. He's he's a, you know a kind and beneficent person. Um, so it's it's a difficult question, but it's 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 not one that. Um, uh, I fear I'm going to change my mind on, and, and, and you know I'm going to lose Pascal's wager when I get to heaven, and the chap says, "Sorry, mate, <laughs> <laughs> it's eternal damnation for you." <laughs> so Jim Rickards has just recorded a video that's not available to anyone in the public, and he's going to be talking about how this upcoming recession is going to be fast, 
It's gonna be bloody, it's gonna be nasty. But at the same time, he's gonna show you how you can position yourself to profit from all of this chaos. Now we've made this video only available to our viewers. Go to LondonReal.tv forward slash Jim. Watch that immediately. I can't say enough good things about Jim Rickards. He understands the global economic system better than any guest I've ever had on London Real. His predictions are almost uncannily true, and you can learn how to profit from his vision, from his expertise, and his understanding of economics. So go to LondonReal.tv forward slash Jim or click the link below. It's an excellent, excellent look on what's gonna happen in the future and how you can position yourself to profit from that. Jim is one of the best in the business, one of my favorite guests on London Real, and he's very, very good at predicting the future and showing us all to profit from it. So click the link and I hope you enjoy. The greedy bankers are about to do it again. In 2008, they crashed our financial system and nearly bankrupted the entire global economy. Then they received trillions of dollars in government bailouts. And after, they demanded fat bonuses paid for by you, the taxpayer. It turns out the banks haven't just been screwing the American taxpayers, they're also screwing over their investors. Turns out uh, the banking industry is the worst place you could put your money despite enormous taxpayer bailouts. Now the bankers are back to take away your financial freedom. They lie and tell you that cryptocurrency isn't safe. They try to make it illegal for you to choose how to invest your hard-earned money. They lie and say cryptocurrency is used by money launderers and criminals. But look at the record. It's the banks themselves that launder hundreds of billions of dollars every year to the biggest criminal operations in the world. Leaked documents have revealed how some UK banks have helped criminals, money launderers and Russians under sanctions. American authorities discovered that the Sinaloa cartel moved $881 million through HSBC accounts as bank officials turned a blind eye to the illegality. The bankers lie and say cryptocurrency is not a real investment. Meanwhile, the smartest CEOs in the world are buying billions and billions of it. The truth is that banks lie about cryptocurrency because it makes them scared. The banks take $9 trillion per year of your hard-earned money, and they are worried that they will finally be exposed. They're scared because crypto means they can no longer control your money, which means they can no longer control you. They are scared because you might actually understand your money and intelligently decide what to do with it. Now is the time for us to come together, fight back, and take control. It's time to educate ourselves, our families, and our communities. Because financial education means financial freedom. We know that cryptocurrencies will help us build the new decentralized financial system of the future. A banking system that is of the people, by the people, and for the people. A banking system where access to finance is a fundamental human right. A banking system that is free and fair and welcomes all humans on this earth. The DeFi revolution is happening. We, the people, can no longer be fooled. We choose to take control of our finances. We choose to take control of our freedom. We choose to take control of our future. Join us, and let's take back our financial freedom forever.